Hello, welcome or welcome back to another video. This week, I tried 100% cotton watercolor paper for the first time, compared it to student grade paper in a side-by-side -side study, and then brought one of those studies to a finished level using color pencils and acrylic. Along the way, I discovered just how different cotton paper is from cellulose, and thought of some tips for working with more expensive supplies when you're used to student grade supplies. Let's get started. The materials I used include Fabriano Studio Hot Press Watercolor Paper, Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper, Faber Castells 12 set of Polychromos Color Pencils, a Mars Lumograph HB Pencil, a white Posca Paint Pen, a Derwent Pencil Extender, a white Jelly Roll Gel Pen, and the Winsor & Newton Cotman 12 pan set of watercolors. The first thing I did was to make a swatch comparison between the Fabriano and Arches papers using the aforementioned Cotman watercolors. If you want to skip straight to the study, I put timestamps below in the description. I didn't bother to swatch the white since it wouldn't have shown up on the white paper anyway, and I also rarely use this color. The Fabriano is on the top and the Arches is on the bottom. After working on the Fabriano during my last study, I knew some of its quirks. As you can see, the paint sits on top of this paper and quickly forms back runs as different areas dry at different rates. In contrast, the Arches paper immediately began to soak in the wet pigment, which created a lighter, less saturated swatch that dried more evenly. Both papers dried quickly within a few minutes, likely due to the environment's low humidity. Even though spring is officially here, it still feels like winter, and the heating dries out the indoor air. However, if you live in a tropical or humid environment, you'll have much more time to play with the wet paint before it dries than I do. My next test was to see how the paper handled lifting. I gently scrubbed a dried swatch of ultramarine blue with a damp brush on both papers. The Fabriano swatch lifted easily, while the Arches swatch required more patience and less overall pigment came up. This could be a pro or a con, depending on your painting style, and it ended up making a difference in the side-by-side -side paintings later on. At that point, I decided to move into the actual studies. Swatches can only tell you so much. I wanted to compare these papers in a study to see which worked better with my techniques and preferences. As always, my first step was to transfer the sketch onto each paper. I don't draw directly on my watercolor paper because I want to minimize the amount of erasing I do on the paper to preserve its durability and texture. Instead, I transfer my sketch using a light box, but a bright window or transfer paper will work just as well. If you plan on only using watercolor, I would recommend a harder lead and a lighter hand so that the graphite doesn't show through on the final piece. But since I planned on using acrylic and color pencil, I didn't worry about this. After this step, I taped the paper down using artist masking tape and began painting. I want to preface this by saying I use the same base sketch, paint, brushes, and even paint mixtures when possible to eliminate as many variables as I could so that the only thing that was different between the two studies was the actual paper. The Fabriano study is on the left and the Arches is on the right. I painted the Fabriano study first since I didn't have room for both studies at the same time, so technically that's another difference. That shouldn't affect how the paper behaved, but I wanted to let you know just in case. Now that the disclaimers are out of the way, let's get into the observations. Both of these studies took roughly an hour and 15 minutes, if you subtract drying times between the layers. The first thing I noticed was that the swatches held true to the overall experience. Water takes a while to sink into the Fabriano, which results in pools and back runs in my initial layers, even when I try to work quickly with one wash. In contrast, the arches immediately soaks in the water, which makes it much easier to create an even wash since everything dries at the same pace. This doesn't guarantee a smooth wash, however. If you introduce water to an area that's already beginning to dry, the hard edge of a back run will appear because these areas have different amounts of water. This happened underneath the chin because the jawline was painted later on. Luckily, I can reduce the contrast in this area with later layers over everything. The second observation I made is that the paint textures can sometimes change on the arches, but it will dry in a flat wash if you apply wet on wet or fast enough to create an even drying surface. I wasn't sure if the dark shirt was granulating from the burnt umber in the color mixture or because of the paper breaking down, but thankfully it came back together as it dried. 
Part of me wants to chalk it up to the granulation, but I did a little research and came up with a possible alternative answer. While watercolor paper can last decades and even centuries in the right conditions, it can also deteriorate over time, if stored incorrectly. I don't know how old this pad of Arches paper is, but I got it at least seven years ago, and it might have sat in a warehouse for years before that. The pad was sealed in plastic wrap and stored in a basement until I opened it earlier this week, but that doesn't mean it was fully protected. Maybe the texture in the wet washes is from granulation, maybe it's from the paper deteriorating, but I wanted to note it either way. The third observation I made is less about the paper and more about the way I unconsciously adjusted according to how the paper was behaving. During last week's study, which was also done on Fabriano Studio paper, I ended up working in smaller areas throughout the study to try to keep the texture uniform. I applied this to the study on the left by painting the hair and skin separately. This resulted in a cooler brown and lighter values since I wasn't using as many washes. Meanwhile, the right study with the Arches paper gave me the confidence to bring the skin's undertone into the hair to lend extra warmth and depth. This resulted in a more uniform color scheme at the end since this base layer tied everything together. The next observation was how things lifted differently. I could layer many times on the arches without accidentally reactivating the layers beneath. When I tried to layer a shadow over the left shoulder on the Fabriano side of the study, however, all the pigment lifted and created a blotchy mess. I was able to smooth it over with a third wash over everything, but nothing like this ever happened on the arches paper. The flip side to this is that any hard edges I created on the arches paper didn't easily soften or erase like those near the eyes or the corners of the mouth. I realized that I was trying to lift less and less on the arches over time, and instead adapting by layering more washes when I had to. You might notice that I jumped to the darkest details faster on the Fabriano paper. This was to try to draw attention away from the uneven texture in the figure and towards the eyes and lips instead. I needed some encouragement from these areas to help finish that study. The final and perhaps most dramatic difference I saw was in the background. This week's study had a simple, deep red background. I used a wet-on-wet -wet technique for the arches, which created a smooth light wash that could be layered on top of. I first tried wet-on-dry for the Fabriano because I was hesitant about oversaturating the paper since water tends to sit on top of it. Unfortunately, this resulted in noticeable brush strokes and unintended value shifts. I later tried wet on wet on the Fabriano background. A similar technique helps smooth transitions in the arches shirt folds, but on the Fabriano, it just lifted and redistributed the underlying layers into an uneven gradient again. Once everything was dry, I stepped back and compared the two. While I like the contrast on the hair highlight better on the Fabriano, overall I prefer the arches because of the smoother gradients, finer details, and more even background. I decided to take the arches study into the mixed media phase. Like always, I started by placing the paper at a 45 degree angle for the sake of my back and to reduce the chances of construction mistakes in the drawing phase. I'll admit that besides preferring the Arches watercolor study, I also wanted to test the color pencil and acrylic marker on it to see how it compared to the Fabriano and other brands I've tried. I'm pleased to report that color pencil performed beautifully on this paper. The white polychromos, which didn't show up on the Fabriano Studio paper or Canson XL watercolor paper, was able to lighten values on the Arches paper on every area. I started by cleaning up the transition points on the face with a mixture of this white, walnut brown, red, and yellow ochre. Once the facial features had better definition, I added depth and color variation to the entire upper part of the figure. The rest of this process is the same as what I've outlined in previous studies. If you want a more in-depth walkthrough, feel free to see the other videos in this Draw With Me playlist. For now, I want to talk about my thoughts on professional grade art supplies and the fear we sometimes feel about using them. I've had this pad of Arches paper for years. It sat in the basement, unopened, because I convinced myself that I wasn't ready to use it and that if I did use it, it would be a waste because my skills weren't good enough. So what changed this time? The biggest factor for me personally was experience. I've been using watercolor consistently for three months now. I've gone through an entire pad of student grade paper and several sheets of other brands. Each study gave me a little more experience and a little more confidence. I set the bar low, 
then raised it incrementally until it felt natural to try the arches. At first, it was an old discontinued brand, then a cheap pad I had for years, then a new pad of inexpensive 25% cotton paper, and finally the older pad of 100% cotton paper. At that point, the jump didn't feel like a big leap anymore. I've done this technique, working up to the professional grade supply, multiple times. In my client work, all my deliverables are done digitally, whether that be concepts or illustrations. These days, I work on an iPad Pro and a 13-inch Cintiq Pro interchangeably. I didn't start out this way. My first tablet was a tiny, screenless one with an active area barely larger than a credit card. Before that, it was loose leaf paper and a number two pencil. Taking small steps helps the risk averse among us and is also more financially responsible for many people. If you're just trying something out for the first time, get the student grade supply. This way there's less pressure and you can focus on deciding if you like the medium at all. However, if you already have the professional grade supply and you're just too scared to use it, here are a couple of other tips. If you've noticed, I like to do thumbnail studies to the side of my final study for every piece. This is a good practice to find color mixtures, but it also saves paper. All my pads of watercolor paper are 9 by 12 inches, but I never actually work to this size. Instead of tossing out that extra paper, I save it for swatches, color tests, and these mini studies. It's less daunting to use something expensive when you know you're going to use every single inch of it. The second tip is to remember things have expiration dates. I knew this about markers already, but I learned that even cotton paper will deteriorate over time this week in some conditions. Maybe that wasn't what happened to this Arches pad, but knowing that it could is great motivation to use it now while it's still good. My last tip is to remember that at the end of the day, art supplies are tools. As lovely as a pristine palette or unsharpened pencils look, it won't bring you nearly as much joy as something you've used many times and know like the back of your hand. My little Cotman palette has taken a beating these last three months, and a couple pans are actually nearly empty. If you put this palette on a table next to a brand new student grade palette from another brand and asked me to choose, I would take the Cotman every time. Why? I know this palette how each color behaves, how to mix my favorite hues, and how to make it work with my specific process. I value it because it's a useful tool, not because it sits on a shelf and looks pretty. Now, this isn't to say you shouldn't have things simply because they're beautiful. This is about tools you want to use but are afraid to ruin. It's okay, you won't ruin it. Instead, you'll find that you love it that much more when you actually get to know it. Here's the finished study. If you made it this far, thank you for listening to my thoughts and ramblings. I know this was a different format than past videos, but I hope it helped if you, like me, are a beginner watercolorist curious about cotton versus cellulose paper, and if both can be used in mixed media. The answer is yes, they can. Overall, I find the arches much easier to work on in both the wet and dry phases of my studies because it handles multiple washes and can take layers of pencil and acrylic. For now, my paper of choice is Arches, but Fabriano and other student grade papers can also work. Just look at my past videos if you want evidence of that. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you made something that brought you joy this week, and I'll see you next week with another video. Bye!